Hi, my name is Mary Holland and I'm the director of the Virginia Museum Studio School. And today we're going to take a tour of our annual faculty exhibition. This first piece we have here is by artist Maria Reardon. Maria teaches a class called Animals in the Landscape. And this piece was taken from a trip she had in Montana and she did a series of sketches in the landscape. And then she came home to her studio in Richmond and actually made this lovely pastel drawing from the sketches that she took in Montana. This piece is by artist Don Flores, and Don teaches watercolor for the studio school. And the title of this piece is Thank God for Mangoes. And that comes from a phrase that her son used to use when he was saying his nighttime prayers when he was a little boy. And he loved oranges so much, he always thanked God for oranges. So she thought that was a really clever uh, way to um, title the painting. So it's Thank God for Mangoes. And Dawn said she really enjoys using mangoes as, as a painting subject because they are terrific for showing a lot of different watercolor techniques. In this particular painting, she's using a lot of glazing, uh, shadows, transparencies, highlights, and also letting the watercolor do its natural thing. This next piece is by artist Randy Toy, and Randy teaches printmaking for the studio school, but he's also a painter and does a lot of drawing. And this is from a series of floral subjects that he's been working on for a couple of years, and they're sort of interesting because they're painted on PVC, which is a plastic, so they're painted on, on the back of plastic and then they're wrapped around a canvas. And um, the imagery is based on little short uh, sketches he's done on his iPad. This piece is by artist and teacher Sarah Clark. And Sarah teaches drawing, pastel drawing and painting for the Virginia Museum Studio School. And this particular piece is done with oil paints. And the title of the piece is 2017. And it's based on a book called Flatland. This piece is by uh, studio school instructor Joan Elliott, who's a painter, and she teaches three of our painting classes, and she has a really loyal following. She does these exquisite little paintings, generally with landscape as a subject, and she does a lot of layering. She works with them over many, many days and many weeks, and uh, th there's a lot of subtlety in them, so you really have to get up close to, to see all the subtle things that are happening. Um, she uses a paint knife a lot and she, um, she layers the color and um, it's, they're very interesting because they're not actual places. She, she goes out in nature a lot but she really sort of creates these in her mind and they sort of become these places as she works on them. The next piece is by um, our instructor Georgie Ann Stinnett who does traditional black and white photography. And uh, this particular piece, you know, you see that it's buildings, but when you hear the title, it, it means more. The title of it is Between Faith and Justice. And this is actually a place in Richmond, and it's the alleyway between St. Paul's Episcopal Church and the Virginia Supreme Court. So that's where the title comes from. This piece is by artist and studio school instructor uh, Frank Saunders, and Frank has worked for the studio school for quite a long time. He teaches traditional black and white photography, but he also teaches collage now. And this is one of his collages, and he's used some of his old photographs to make this collage. He's cut it up, and then he's made it three-dimensional, so he's backed some of these small pieces with foam cores, so it really has a lot of interest. And the title is, of this piece is The Other Side of the Cemetery Gate. This last piece on the wall is by painter Andy Ballaty. And Andy is well known for his plein air paintings, which are paintings on site. He's actually in the landscape with his easel and paints, painting from nature. So this particular piece is called James River Park Rock Climbers. And Andy has a really nice touch. Um, he does the paintings fairly quickly, and he has a very nice color sensibility. These three pieces are actually my work, and um, it's a triptych, and the three together are called Shifting Perspectives. And they're in response to uh, the pandemic that we're currently experiencing. And so I've gotten a number of found images in the pieces, and 
I've also used decorative papers, uh, painted papers, and sienna types that I've made, and I've combined them in different ways and glued them to panel, and then they're finished off with a, um, a cold wax to kind of protect the finish. This large painting is by uh, our studio school instructor and artist, Sally Bowering. And Sally does really dynamic paintings. She teaches abstract painting for us. And this is, uh, image is called Something to Consider. And Sally uses uh, gardens a lot and landscape as reference in these pieces. So in this abstract piece, she talks about structure and pathways and the changing color of the seasons in a garden. This little painting is by Sarah Hand, and Sarah teaches uh, paper mache, mixed media drawing, and basic drawing for the studio school. And the title of this piece is Cake is Love, You Know It's True, and it's gouache and colored pencil. Sarah also has been working on a book about paper mache, and it will be published next spring. The piece right behind me is by Marinda Cecilia, and Marinda also teaches basic drawing for the studio school. And uh, this small little piece might surprise you. You probably think it's charcoal on paper, but it's actually ceramic, underglazed plaster, and transfer on cast slip. So the piece that looks like a piece of paper is actually ceramic. This piece here is by um, artist and stained glass artist uh, Jude Schlotzhauer. And um, it's cast glass and uh, pewter. And it's very heavy, it's small but heavy. And um, the title of it is Rose Garden. And it sort of evokes growth and transformation. The next piece here is by um, artist and painter Karen Eide. And Karen teaches encaustic painting for the studio school. And this particular piece is called I Cried Through the Eyes of a Swan. And it's about a memory of hers. She used to live on a wide creek in Virginia, and she said these black swans, which are not native, would come every year and raise their signets. The next piece here is by uh, artist and teacher Mary Sweezy. Mary teaches embroidery and silk painting for the studio school and has done embroidery for a long time. And this particular piece is called Vertical Labyrinth and it's based on some walks she's taken during the pandemic. The piece we have here is by uh, Potter and uh, teacher Stephen Glass and it's a special piece. It was. Um, wood fired and salt fired and that's kind of a complicated process. It's done at Cub Creek Pottery um, and Stephen has done some workshops there and you can see it has this beautiful kind of kiss of flames on it but it's a very exquisite piece. This piece, this photograph is by photographer John Henley and John teaches photographic lighting for the studio school. And if you live in Richmond, you probably recognize it. It's the diamond, the baseball diamond on the boulevard. He came upon it one night when it was completely lit, but they were not playing a game. And uh, he said, I saw the diamond and all, all full of light and ready for a game, but no one was there to witness it. And it's a digital print. This piece is by artist uh, and teacher Matt Lively, and Matt teaches um, painting studio for us, landscape painting, uh, pet portraits, and cloud painting. And this particular piece is another Richmond landmark. It's Maymont Park, and he's put one of his creations in it, and the title of it is Maymont, Skewed House Sculpture Product Placement. This piece is a print by artist Ajong Kim, and Ajong currently teaches children's book illustrations for the studio school. And it's a beautiful um, linoleum cut called Beginning Place. And it's a two color print. You can see the rose color, which was printed first, and then the purple that's printed over the pink. And the title of it is Beginning Place. And Ajong also writes poetry, so there's a short poem that goes with this. Um, print, beginning place, in that place of beginning, when one looks like another, primordial, pulsing, aching to connect, branch out, become, never be afraid of the emptiness, it's only waiting for you.
to begin. The next piece we have is by artist and teacher Dennis Winston. And Dennis teaches drawing and also woodcut printmaking for the studio school. And this particular piece is titled Royal Head Gold II. And it's a beautiful woodcut and it's done on this decorative golden paper. And Dennis said it's based on a show that was here several years ago of Benin Bronze's sculpture at the Virginia Museum. This piece is by artist and teacher Diego Sanchez. And Diego's been teaching painting and mixed media for the studio school. And this is a very timely piece. It's called Watch Your Distance. And you can see he's referring to the pandemic that we're going through. You see that there's a mask here and the six foot distance. It's oil paint and cold wax medium, which is a really interesting medium. Um, if you come up and look at the piece more closely, you can see there's a lot of layers and there's transparency in it, but it's a very vi vibrant piece. This next piece is by artist Jacqueline Brown, and she teaches digital photography for the studio school. And this particular piece is titled Church Window. And it's from a series called A Kind of Blindness, A Kind of Light. This painting is by artist and uh, teacher Martha Prideau. And Martha's been a student at the studio school for a long time and has just currently started teaching a workshop on cold wax medium. This particular piece is titled Only the Ocean and Me. And Martha talks about being inspired by incoming waves, rising tide, and the ensuing swirling, foamy, salty water. And if you look at it closely, you can really see those white caps and all the motion that the water is churning around with. This last painting in the show is by artist and teacher Kendra Wadsworth. And Kendra teaches painting for us and experimental drawing and painting and also does poor painting workshops. So Kendra loves the painting to be sort of forceful and experimental. In this particular piece, she's using the painting, uh, the paint very thickly. It's almost like icing on the canvas. And she's also using roof tarring. So you get that really dark, rich tar on this piece. But she's, she's all into experimentation and really pushing the limit of the medium. Hi, thanks for taking a tour uh, of the Virginia Museum Studio School faculty exhibition. We have a lot of very talented artists and teachers. And if you're interested in taking a class, please look up the information on the Virginia Museum's website.